Powertrain Industries, the leader in driveline innovation and solutions, brings you another edition of How To. Today we're going to remove this guy, the universal joint, or U-joint. First, let's remove the bearing caps and inspect the trunnion. Wipe off any excess grease or dirt so that you can get a good look at what's going on here. This is a classic case of needle bearing wear or burnelling for you tech junkies out there. It's time to replace this joint. Let's go ahead and get this U-joint out of the drive shaft yoke. Now whether you're using a press or a hammer, we're going to show you how to get the U-joint out safe and correct. The first and most important step is eye protection. Let's get started by removing the snap rings from the yoke. Now your U-joint may have an inside snap ring like this, or an outside snap ring like this one. For outside clip, a good set of snap ring pliers will help remove the clip easily. For inside clips, a flathead screwdriver works best with a hammer to punch the clip from the yoke. Let's give it a try. You want your flathead screwdriver to seat right behind the clip to force it off. But before you do this, place a rag behind the yoke in order to catch the clip as it flies off. Now place your flathead in its spot and give a firm strike with a hammer like this. Repeat this step for the other snap rings. It may take a few tries. Now let's get the joint out. If removing the U-joint with the press, roll the press down to meet the bar. Then pull on the bar to force the U-joint cap out of the yoke. Turn the yoke 180 degrees and repeat the process for the other cap. Once the caps are removed, then remove the trunnion and you're done. If you're using a hammer to do the job, you'll need a U-joint cradle like this one, or a table vise like this one, and an impact socket with a hole inside it large enough for the U-joint cap to go inside. Let's get started. Firmly position the U-joint into the cradle. Position a socket directly over the cap. Then with a forceful strike from a hammer, push the cap out of the yoke's eye. Let's take another look. Turn your shaft and repeat this process until both caps have been removed. This may take several strikes. If you're using a vise to remove your joint, never by any means clamp down onto the drive shaft tubing. Doing this can result in damaging the tube causing vibrations and drive shaft failure. Instead, use the vise ears to rest just like you would use the U-joint cradle, and then remove the same way. Once the caps and trunnions are removed, let's clean the snap ring grooves. This will ensure proper seating for your new snap rings later on. Next, deburr and clean the U-joint holes. Failure to do so may result in a tight fitting U-joint and possibly premature failure. And now you're ready to install your new U-joint. Powertrain recommends installing pre-lubed Spicer Life joints. If you're using a lubed or serviceable U-joint, make sure to add grease to your cap before the installation. Let's go ahead and put it in. First slip the trunnion through one of the U-joint holes. Next insert a cap into the hole while slipping the trunnion into the cap. Be careful here as to not displace any of the needle bearings inside of the cap. If this happens, remove the cap from the trunnion, restack the needles and try again. Once you're ready, roll the press down until it meets the top of the cap. Then pull down on the handle, forcing the cap into the yoke eye. 
your optimum spot for the cap is just below the snap ring groove. Turn the shaft and repeat the procedure for the other cap. When installing the U-joint back into the yoke with a hammer, the same rules and procedures apply. Be careful not to use the ball part of a ball peen hammer on your U-joint cap. Doing this can damage the cap internally and may result in premature U-joint failure. Instead, use the flat part of the hammer for a more flush strike. Once your cap is seated properly, turn the shaft over and repeat the steps. Now let's use our flat faced punch to seat the cap properly into place. Strike the punch until the cap rests just below the snap ring groove. Now let's insert our snap rings with a set of snap ring pliers. Ease the snap ring into the snap ring groove until it expands or snaps into place. Turn the shaft over and repeat the process for each cap you're installing. When installing your U-joint equipped with inside snap rings, follow the same steps. But this time, make sure the snap ring groove that's machined into the cap rests just below the retaining wall of the yoke. Then take your clip and set it gently into the cap's groove, and with a firm bump from a hammer, the snap ring should slide easily into its spot. Repeat this step as necessary for the remaining clips. It may be necessary to strike the side of the yoke to relieve the pressure on the U-joint in order to make it rotate properly. Another way to relieve pressure is to strike the punch on top of both caps in order to free tension. And there you have it. Smooth turning radius is optimum for U-joint life and wear. Congratulations, your U-joint is installed. If you have an attaching yoke to install, all the same steps apply. Never strike any yoke seal surface. Doing so can result in a leaking transmission or differential. And one more thing before we go. Let's top off that greasable U-joint. Make sure grease purges through all four caps to ensure proper lubrication. And remember, if you don't feel comfortable doing the job, walk it on into your nearest power train. And we'll be glad to assist you. Thanks for watching this episode of Powertrain Industries How To. Tune in again for another episode coming soon.